Okay, woo! Hello, any replayers? If you're a replayer, you can still participate. You can tap on the screen for hearts. You can, um, hi Daryl. You can, of course, um, share if anybody you need. But, uh, about individual retirement accounts or IRA contributions. So two things on taxes. If you're unable to finish your taxes, filing your taxes by the deadline, you can apply for an extension. There is no special need or reason that you need to have to file an extension. You can get an automatic six-month extension. Now, you have to pay your taxes on time. So this is a public service announcement. You have to pay your taxes on, on time. So if you already paid what you owed, then you could just file an extension. There's no penalty or anything like that because the government doesn't care if it's holding on to your money. Uh, if you're due a refund. If you're kind of on the border, you can still do that and you can pay a small penalty. Penalty is not that, um, hello, Rio de Janeiro. Penalty is not that big. So again, if you're struggling and if you're really stressed and you're like, I'm just going to try to do the best I can and not get all your information in properly, like if you're missing deductions, if you really haven't done your business expenses and stuff like that, I recommend just filing an extension. It's really liberating. Just don't do what I do, which is I usually wait till October 15th. Hi, how are you? till October 15th to do them. So this is just a public service announcement because we are near tax time and I will be filing an extension once again because I am busy and I haven't gotten to it. So filing an extension is still a process, uh, but it's a fairly, it's a much quicker process than filing your taxes, especially if your taxes are as complex as mine. By the way, most business people and most wealthy people file extensions. So don't know what crim is. Anyway, the topic for today though is IRAs. And they are, and I've been researching like mad because I feel like there's a lot of confusion on the um, on IRAs or individual retirement accounts and like so who's eligible. And even in my mind, I'm like, what, what? How you know? It's like once you're outside of it, yeah. Thank you. Once you're outside of some of the contribution limits, you are going to um, you start paying attention to it, right? So I feel like whenever I talk about IRAs, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Look it up. So I did look it up. So I want to, and I'm going to start entering this information into a, a little chart so that I can show you on it, um, show you that. Oh, uh, bien, merci beaucoup. Uh, very scary. Um, I don't know, what's, what's very scary? The IRAs, <laughs> individual retirement accounts. Um, so I want to really break down the um, individual retirement account. So what is an individual retirement account? I'm actually going to flash some of the IRS sites. You know, it is very difficult to manage household budget. I, I totally agree. And that's why I'm so, I'm such a proponent of setting things up that's easier for you when things are going well. When things are going well and we're managing it and we're doing a lot of manual stuff, we think like, oh, I can handle it. But then a crisis comes and it totally throws you off the loop. So I'm always really, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big proponent of people really uh, doing the work when times are good. And when times are good, people are like, woohoo, I don't have to worry about it. When times are good, it is the time to think about money. It is the time for you to manage your money because times are good and it's not stressful because a situation will come. It's happened to me a lot of times before when unexpected things happen and all of a sudden you let your financial stuff go. Why? Because you're emotionally or um, physically in, in crisis or your family's in crisis and you don't have the time. So always, always spend time on your money when things are going well. That's actually the most important thing you can do. Okay, but back to our IRA topic. So there are two types of IRAs or individual retirement account. And by the way, this is very U.S. centric. Uh, yeah, this is a very U.S. centric um, periscope because it's only in the U.S. that we have these tax deferred um, and tax free uh, retirement savings vehicles. So let's first talk about the differences between the traditional and the Roth IRA. You can, if you Google that, like the best place to learn about it is the IRS. Sometimes the IRS's language is a little bit hard to understand. That's why I'm trying to break it down for you guys. So a traditional IRA is the, is, can be tax deductible. And I say can because we're going to talk about income limits. So for a lot of people, a traditional IRA contribution can reduce their taxes today. And I'm talking about it's timely because as the tax deadline nears, that's actually your deadline to contribute for last year. 
So most of tax deductions can only be taken when the transaction happened in the calendar year to 2015. So if you're like, oh, I want to spend something for my business. Uh, I want to make an expenditure in my business to lower my taxes for last year. Well, if you didn't do it before December 31st, like kind of too late, buddy, uh, especially if you're in a cash accounting. Um, and so a lot of things that like already happened, you cannot make a charitable contribution right now that already should have happened by December, but this is the one of the only few exceptions, um, where you can look for a loan at your bank or, um, lending club or prosper, or, you know, I don't know, mom and dad, bank of mom and dad. Um, so the traditional IRA can give you tax deductibility. What do I do? Oh, I, well, I'm talking about money right now, but I'm a management consultant. I advise businesses mostly. Most of my career has been spent advising Fortune 500 companies how to become more profitable. Uh, but I love money and I love teaching people about money. So that's why I'm here on Periscope. Uh, so on Periscope, I do money habits. Um, do you need insurance? Um, I don't, I mean, insurance is important. It's an important part. Um, and everyone should have some. Oh, we talked about it this morning. I should catch my scope from this morning. I talk about risk assessment. And tomorrow morning, I'm actually going to talk about more insurance uh, as well, what kind of insurance people should have. So anyway, um, where was I? Oh, yes. Um, so individual retirement accounts. So if you're, if you're actually motivated and you have $5,500 per person in your, in your purview, like don't borrow that money, like don't go borrow that money. But if you have saved that money and it doesn't have to be $5,500, that's the limit. Um, think about opening an individual retirement account because you can lower your taxes, which means you can get some more cash flow on your tax return. And you may ask yourself, but I already filed my taxes. Well, you know, it's a little more complicated, but you could file a corrected taxes if you contribute your IRA by, by 15th. If you don't, never fear. Every day is a, new, a good taste to start or every year. You need to start thinking about 2016. So if you can't make a contribution in the next five days for the last year, that's okay. We're going to work on this year, right? So 2016 is a perfectly fine time to start your IRAs. And so um, that's why I'm talking about why it's timely. Okay, so first let's talk about the two different ones. So traditional IRAs are, um, goodbye, no sex here, just money, 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 money. Um, and um, a traditional IRA can be deductible. So that's the one that people most think about because they're like, oh good, I get more money now, I get a bigger refund. And again, I had uh, contributed to a deductible IRA uh, a lot when I was younger because you know what, cash was important. Like having the deduction mattered to me at the time because it was very limited in terms of how much money I was making. So I'm all for it. I think it's a very good way to get going because you it favors your cash flow by increasing your refund. The Roth IRA though, the Roth IRA is a beautiful thing. So the Roth IRA, you do not get a tax deduction when you make a contribution into it. And the thing about a Roth IRA, it does have a more strict income limit for people to contribute. And most people don't understand that, right? They don't understand the tax deduction, uh, the tax deductible, the traditional IRA and the Roth IRA. They're like, oh, I'll just open a Roth IRA because hello, hello. Um, yeah, so, so the traditional, so again, traditional IRA is a deductible IRA. And we'll talk about the income limits. And a Roth IRA is never deductible. And some people don't qualify for a Roth IRA because they earn too much money. No, not yet. Uh, but thanks for asking. Uh, and so the traditional IRA, uh, no, I'm a money teacher. I teach about money. Um, so, uh, look at that. Hold on, hold on. Uh, this is a mob that's on here. So if you if you continue to comment, so anyway, people are trying to decide. I've heard of these people that join in. Oh, how many? Okay, luck, luck. Okay, sorry, just have to get the trolls out. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> yeah, there were some trolls. Um, so. So anyway, the traditional IRA and the Roth IRA. So traditional IRA, you get a tax deduction. Um, you get a tax deduction right now and you will get, um, a, but when what happens is with a traditional IRA, you can, you can add up the tax deductions over the years and then you're going to get um, 
I, when you withdraw the money, it will be taxed, right? So that's actually the, the, the like refinement most people don't know. And then with the Roth IRA, because you're not getting a tax deduction, two things happen. The money what grows in a Roth IRA never gets taxed, the growth. And then when you withdraw that money, it will never get taxed either. So a Roth IRA is a very favorable investment vehicle. The thing is that when you're short on cash, I would still steer you towards a traditional IRA because of your cash flow restrictions. And um, so that's just the two comparisons. Do ask me if you have questions about traditional versus Roth. Um, so let's talk about the deductibility of uh, a traditional IRA. So if you're gonna go with a traditional IRA, you can um, deduct it in the following circumstances. And so let me, let me just actually, I'm gonna flip for this uh, comparison. So again, this is the, um, just really go. Yes, here we go. And you don't have to. This is retirement plans. This is straight off the IRS.gov. Always go to the source. It actually goes through and it talks about it. But again, I feel like sometimes the language is a little bit more sort of technical than most people like to read. And that's why I'm down. So um, the deductibility of the IRA. Here is the thing. If you have a 401k plan at work or your spouse has a 401k at work, so you and or your spouse, there will be limits to whether or not you can deduct your traditional IRA. If you are single or head of households, if you are not married and you don't have, yeah, if you, 403b, same thing. If you have a retirement plan at work, you are impacted by income limits on the deductibility. So if you're a person who has no 401k, no 403b, no thrift savings plan, right? No, tr no retirement plan available to you. So just because you aren't contributing, you, right? Like that's the thing. You are not covered by retirement plan. So if you're not covered, your contribution is fully deductible. No income limits whatsoever. So single, married, no, none of us have, have, none of you have access to a, uh, a retirement plan you can fully deduct no income limit so this is really good for self-employed people who are just starting out and they're not really advanced enough to get an individual 401k if you're just self if your income is entirely from self-employment because you don't have a, a plan that you covered you and or your spouse you are fully eligible and to me that's an important thing you have can reduce your taxes today by doing this contribution again for 2015 for five more days um, for 2016, again, that's going to come off your taxes. Now, it's a big chunk of change. Like, you have to have the money to contribute. And again, if you have high interest credit card debts, please, please pay those off first. You will not out-invest um, high credit card debts. So that's important. But student loan debts and mortgage debts should never precede your ability to invest in a traditional IRA. So, because we've done the math. Um, so what happens if one of you is covered by a... Uh, 401k plan or 403b plan or any kind of retirement plan at work. If your job offers you a retirement plan, yours or your spouse's to whom you're legally married, important guys, um, if, the, if one of you has one of those plans, then there are some limits. So if you are single and you have a 401k or 403b or any kind of retirement plan, if you're making $61,000 or less, you could contribute to a, a deductible traditional IRA. So 61,000, um, there is a gap. There's like between 61 and 71, they do partial deductions. So again, it's kind of like, think of yourself. If you're over 71, nothing can be deducted. If you're single or head of household, so single income no uh, and, and you have a retirement plan at work, and if you're over $71,000, uh, you're kind of out of luck, right? And then when you're under 61, you're fully deductible. For being married, filing jointly, here's the thing. There's different income limits for you and your spouse when only one of you is covered, right? So I know, it's like, I'm like, ah, it's so confusing, right? And so when you and your spouse, so, you know, traditional household that's married, 